Right. So uh, I've seen this once before. I think MCs used a similar build where it's both oracles, and he actually went berserk with oracles, yeah. and then kind of followed it for an attack. But a scan does go off from Tejri. She's one Stargate. So remember, he's got Widow Mines oh. already down, and there isn't any detection for Widow Mines. So if they were to borrow down, the Stalker gets picked off here. So this is definitely not the best start for Shaq. No, losing to those two stalkers, that zealot, and now those marines, they're, they're going to move out. He should be able to find this gold base. It, uh, it looks like it is done, so the Mothership Corps can get a bit of usefulness. I've only ever seen once on this map this kind of setup. It wasn't quite off a gold base like this, but uh, I've seen like, Hero do this in, uh, the, uh, in uh, kind of the Pro League. So this can be good. It's just it's really weird because you don't see this. This doesn't happen almost ever. Right, well, the Widow Mines are here, and they're going to plant themselves down on this natural. One borrows straight away. There is a Photon Overcharge targeting down the Medivac. The probes do come off the line here, and the Oracles are going to have to use their energy defensively rather than aggressively, which obviously in this kind of setup set and strategy, you don't want to be doing that. And now Tej is actually pushing forward with his Medivac with another Widow Mine in there. And this is tricky because he doesn't have that Oracle to fight with. Now, of course, he has double Oracle production, but he has to clean up a lot of Marines in his base. And there's also that extra Widow Mine here that's going to make things more and more difficult. No Photon Overcharge for this base. Just three Stalkers in that Oracle. Tasia is stepping forward in Shaq. He's taking some pretty heavy losses here. There turns on the Pulsar Beam, but there's a Widow Mine. About that Widow Mine takes out a Stalker, injures the other two, and these Oracles are not enough to shut down this force. GG. Tasia takes game one in this series against our under dog Protoss. And uh, Tasia made that look a little bit easy, Nathanius. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the way that Shaq opened up, he ran the Zealot over, the Mothership Corps, the Stalker, threw away a couple of units, didn't really get what he was looking for, and then, you know, can also give it to Tasia. He did a good job scouting, he saw what was coming, and he prepared accordingly. He delayed his command center, and that's not something that you would do if you thought, this guy's not gonna, this, won't, this shouldn't do any damage, I feel really yeah. comfortable. Tasia played, I think, to his opponent, which, you know, we've been hearing is that aggressive style, and it worked well. All right, well, that was a fast one for Tasia, and he's on the road to where he's meant to be going. And it's up to this 15-year-old who is facing a world-class player. There's no doubt, Tasia is one of the best in the business. One of the best Terran players globally. And unfortunately, it's not easy, and uh, we've seen that already in game number one. That's right, and here we are loaded in to game number two, of course, our leading player in this series, potentially uh, runner to contend for the tournament crown, it is Liquid Zetasia. Not too far away in the bottom right, our Prodos player from Team ECV, he's trying, well he already has made a name for himself, but he's trying to, to do as much as he can in this series at least. It is Shaq. Well, I guess we'll find out which way he's going to go, whether it be aggressive or if he's going to play to the map size here within the next couple of seconds if he decides to go for that Nexus first, which, you know, can be used or we'll see what he's going to be doing. It's, I mean, you can hardly even imagine being in his shoes right now with the mm -hmm. task that he has ahead. But, you know, it's, we, we, could, we could say, hey, he's, he's a player that's up against a Titan. There's nothing to lose because of the position he's in in this tournament. He's already come so far. But right. that doesn't make it any easier when you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm still playing. You're still playing versus Tasia. There's, there's going to be nerves. You can't, you don't just calmly go into a match against this guy and say, oh, yeah, I've got no fear at all. This, this is going to be like any other ladder game. And I think that's one of the things that just makes this uh, a, a particularly difficult matchup because he's also now got that extra attention on him. He's not a player that's played on a stage like this before. Uh, this might be the most, time, most amount of people that have ever watched one of his games. I think it is. I'm pretty sure it is, actually, in Venice. Um, double Gas coming down by Slack again. And I just, we always seem to be changing his name. I called him Slack then. <laughs> Another one to add to the list. Um, we'll see where he's going to take it from here. He did open up very similar in the previous game. Two on one gas, one on the other, and he will be going 2 2 very shortly. It is a Reaper from Tasia, and I do like this addition. Yeah, he's not, he's not going to take any chances yeah, against yeah. Jack. He knows. Uh, and even if there was a Nexus first, if that Reaper goes straight to the bottom right base, then there's a potential that he could have even picked off of a few probes, but 
We can see, of course, that he's, Shaq's gone for the cybernetics core. He's going to play this out at least as normally as we would expect so far. But still, he's shown that he is a player that can do something absolutely crazy. Maybe, maybe this just looks normal to us, and then all of a sudden, you know, some just complete madness pops up. Command center place down quite standard here from Teju. He's going to go across the map now with his Reaper to the bottom right-hand side, and we'll start to try to figure out what's going on. It looks like we are going to see the Nexus planted down, but... The follow-up from that is the more interesting part. Still two and two in gas here. Yeah, I'm, well, excited, cool I'm excited start. to see what he does. This, yeah, is, yeah. this is some this is some cool things he's been trying to bust out here. Here comes the Reaper. Mothership core only about halfway done. Just trying not to lose any probes, but Tasia is a hard guy not to lose probes to in a situation like this. So one, two killed, potentially Oops. a third. Mothership core is here, gets the third probe kill, and the Reaper escapes. Oh boy. It's a rough start for Shaq. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, you're not meant to lose three workers. You're not meant to lose any workers to this um, in an ideal world. You're meant to be able to push this back. The Reaper, from a Terran perspective, is there only to scout. So killing three Reapers, is, I mean, killing three workers there is massive. And Tasia, with the Reaper still alive, is only cool to go in again and have a look what's the plan. But he's gone straight for the probe line. Doesn't see any addition of tech. And, Without that, whatever he chooses is late, so it has to be a normal game, right? Yeah, well, there's a pylon on the way in the top left side of the map, so there's a, mm. still some trickery maybe that he's got up his sleeve. It's done, so we'll see. I mean, he's got 300 gas. Maybe he just builds two Stargates right there. That'd be crazy. No. Be, no. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, Sean. This is looking, there, you did you missed a bit of impression. This is looking, this is looking pretty dicey here. Oh there we go, gosh. two Stargates. And, oh man, what's that? What's that reap? Where's it going? There's an STV checking the, uh, the left side of that base. Uh oh, oh if he crosses this Oh no, probe. he's going to see the probe. Tasia, he, this, you know, he's not the player to see this and be like, oh no, yeah, there's, there's nothing. Yeah, there's a probe there for no reason. He's going to come up a, and be like, this is what? A, little, this is a brilliant scout. Absolutely fantastic there from Tasia. He goes in, sees it, and this is terrible, absolutely terrible here. He's already sent another probe to try to build another pylon. He's sending his stalker over to protect this, but man, you mean you got two Stargates, your opponent knows that this, I can't imagine that there's no way that this build isn't completely all in in some, some fashion or another. Right. The Marines are gonna move out to help hold this down as well. And the two oracles, oh, they might, that, be, that pylon's gonna get killed before I, I think at least the second one gets out. I mean, Tage is moving his uh, Marines out to to help with this as well. They find a Stalker in the middle of the map. There's a lot of Marines there too. Oh, that Oracle will be able to finish so he can kill the Reaper, but I don't actually think it's enough to kill the rest of the Marines that are here. Yeah, that's too much. He, he's, he, yeah. there's, I don't think he can stop him from coming and killing this. Second Oracle's on its way. The probe just gets shut down immediately here, and he's waiting for the Stalker to come up. Tasia doesn't want to wait too long here because with three Oracles would kill this, so he needs to actually depower these Stargates, which he's aiming for, yeah. and he does. So he has to finish it, and you know, without that probe, that's pretty much... Does but he have another one going across? No, this is like everything of his plan, though. I mean, the, he's piled on block quite massively. He goes into a fight with the Oracles. I mean, with the Marines. And well, GG. Tasia takes a very quick 2-0 there. And... Uh